Welcome to the Rosal Business Podcast. On this episode, we speak with Steve Shermet, a little bit about his life, his businesses, and words to live by. Enjoy. Steve. Hey. Thank you for uh, interrupting your work week and life and everything to spend some time with us. Uh, um, I've had the privilege over the past uh, just half year or just a little bit more to start getting to know you and uh, we've had a few meetings here and there and even on a, we'll talk more later, but on a film, I uh, had the privilege of working with you. But a uh, neat thing to have you a part of our community now. I, so we'll, we'll talk about that as we right. go, but uh, I, w I always like to open up with just a little bit about uh, Steve, the person. We'll talk about business and some of the other things that are happening there, but um, where do you come from? What, what's your, some of your history, some key points, things that uh, you see as interesting and maybe I'll draw out some All of right. that too. Well, I started in Connecticut. That's where I'm originally from. Uh, moved to Southern California. So really I'm a California boy, Southern California boy, which means I got no class and no culture. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and uh, lived in Southern Florida. So I also consider that home. Okay. Uh, went to school in Chicago and that's where I met my wife, uh, Moody Bible Institute. And um, we moved from there to Tucson, Arizona, where we spent the next 30 years. I started a couple of congregations, a couple of organizations, had four children three of which went off and got married, and um, all of them live in different states now. During that time, I was a, a pastor for, for many okay. years, television host, uh, martial artist, scuba diver, and then I got into film and television, and I've been producing and acting for the last several years. Wow. In a nutshell, that's it. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> you've, you've just been sitting on the couch doing nothing. Doing mostly. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so you did a lot of moving around. What, what was that about? What, what caused that type of? Well, when we lived in Connecticut, my parents divorced and they both moved to different states. Okay. So I spent some time with my mom in California, some yeah. time with my dad in Florida. And then when I went into adulthood, um, I lived in California initially, but then I went to school in Chicago. Okay. So, and then ministry brought us to Tucson. Now school, you mean uh, university, college level? Stuff. Yeah, Moody Bible Institute. Yeah, 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 okay. And why did, why did you choose that? What was, what was the path? What was the design? Because clearly you don't just accidentally choose to go to a Bible college. Right, they have a, a Jewish studies program there. It was okay. one of the only ones in the country at the time uh, from a Christian and Jewish perspective. And uh, it was ideal. So okay. that's where I ended up going. And so that's, that's a lot of your background is, um, I guess you just introduced it. You come from a Jewish uh, heritage? Yeah, uh, I'm a believer in Jesus. Okay. But I'm uh, s strong in my Jewish identity. Okay. Uh, I was born and raised Jewish, but I came to believe Jesus is the Messiah. And I had a passion about that. I wanted to learn more about my heritage, learn more about him and the Bible. And uh, Moody Bible Institute was, was a good fit for me. Wow. Okay. So you went you went to the Institute. Does that, does that consist of a, a degree plan, a, a minister? Yes. I know that's different for most people. They're not used to that style of study. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. A, it's a regular bachelor's degree uh, okay. in Jewish studies in modern Israel. And then a few years after that, I went off to a seminary and got a degree in, um, it was a pastoral studies with an emphasis on expository preaching. Okay. So it was a very rounded, biblical course of study. And then of course I took the basic stuff that people have to take, you know, astronomy, English, history, that kind of stuff. Okay. And you said, and in the midst of all of that intense study, you found the lady which you decided to settle down with. Yes, we met at Moody Bible Institute, uh, which people affectionately call Moody Bridal Institute. Okay. Because a lot of people end up there single and leave married. Wow. So yeah, I got married and finished my school she actually quit school to work so she could put me through school. Wow, so it was true love. Then. Yeah, it was awesome. And My then goodness. many years later, after raising our children, uh, we put her back into school. She became a nurse. Okay. And now she's a nurse pra practitioner. Okay. Which is what brought us to Roswell. She got a, a job here as a nurse practitioner. Got it. And uh, so I guess uh, following her to Roswell, I know we're bouncing around, but yeah. we'll, we'll chase rabbits and get there. 
following her to Roswell because of career shift and change. I know you had told me about that. Um, does that mean that you have totally uh, stopped doing the church work and stuff like that? Or, or did you have to quit in order to follow the job? Or how did that work? No, actually, um, after about 30 plus years of ministry, I just got tired and decided okay. to retire from full-time ministry. Yeah. Um, I had gotten into acting a couple of years before that, decided to just focus in on that. Uh, but I still have speaking engagements, uh, teaching engagements, okay. people at their congregations, churches, um, seminaries invite me in and I come in and teach and speak. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very much fun. Yeah. So 30 years uh, doing church work. Uh, what did that look like? What, what was your what was your life? How did how did that function? You know, uh, pastors are not always people's un fully understanding of how that life works. Well, you know, I know this is a business centered podcast. And so, you know, you, you get out of Bible college and or seminary um, and you want to start a congregation without going through a major denomination, you have to learn the ropes. Yeah. You have to learn about um, taxes and setting up a corporation and um, setting up a bank account and getting your own phone and learning about advertising. And it's, it's like starting a regular business. Yeah, yeah. But obviously we're not there to make money or sell a product. We're there to do church type things. Right. So I had to assemble a, uh, a congregation and learn as I went. And I ended up leading the first congregation for about 27 years. Wow. And then, wow. yeah, I That's was rare. with them for a long time. And during that time, um, I helped start an association of congregations. Uh, I helped start a congregation in Mexico. And then I started a non-denominational church. And so I led the Messianic congregation on Saturdays and the non-denominational church on Sundays. And in between that, I, you know, I spoke at other congregations. Um, I was a, an interim pulpit pastor for about a year at a, at a large Baptist church, and then an interim pulpit pastor for about two years at a non-denominational church uh, in between that okay. stuff. In fact, it was being at those two churches that inspired me to start the non-denominational church. Understood. So, so what is it that you enjoy? Because obviously if you were able to stay somewhere for 27 years, you really enjoyed what you were doing. Not only that, you were connecting with people anyways. What, did, what was it that was so much fun about all that? Well, there are parts of what I was doing that were extremely enjoyable and parts that were extremely draining. And I put up with the parts that are draining. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I did it because it was enjoyable. I did it because it was the thing I needed to do. It was Understood. my mission. You okay. know, I felt a calling to do it. Yeah. Um, I love teaching people. I love teaching people the Bible, the Word of God. And I had an opportunity to do that. And I took as many opportunities to do that as I could all over the world. Uh, went to England, went to Mexico, went to India, and ended up tying with God's Learning Channel, which started wow. here in Roswell. Okay. And I um, did some teaching there. I hosted some television programs with them. Now, you had told me um, when we were talking pre-recording that uh, the God's Learning Channel deal uh, was Alan Tommy Cooper. Yes. And some of our, our listeners and viewers that are local, um, the worldwide may or may not know them, but the local people probably remember them from the, uh, I don't know if they were as far back as the 70s, but definitely the 80s uh, with a TV channel, KRPV and, and other things that were happening here. So you said it started here. How does how yep. did that happen? They started here um, on local television and then they ended up expanding and they moved to uh, Odessa, okay. Texas. And they had, I don't know what you call them, antennas for local broadcasting in the states in this area. So they hit locally, but then they also ended up getting on satellite and broadcasting all over the world. And they, they were very active for many years. Right. And um, now they're trying to transition into the, you know, the YouTube, the Facebook, the Instagram age and um, going through a, a new a new birth right now. Yeah. And they're actually considering moving back to Roswell. Wow. I don't know if that's private information or not, but if I say considering, I guess we're good. Sure. Yeah. So how did you get connected with that? They had a musician that frequented their studio, um, Ted Pierce, okay. an amazing worship leader. And um, it just so happened he was doing worship on God's Learning Channel a couple days before he was going to drive out to Tucson to do worship at our congregation. They were looking for content, good solid content. Um, and he said, hey, I know a guy. Wow. And I don't know if it was at the exact same time before or after, 
But I had already reached out to them, I think. Okay. But this was kind of like the, hey, we've got to meet with this guy kind of thing. And it took a while, but uh, they asked me to send them some um, video of the services we held. And they gave some feedback as to what they need for broadcast quality. We improved, so it was worth broadcast. And they started broadcasting our services. Wow. They invited me out to interview me. Went very well. We, we, we bonded. The interviews went well. So they invited me again and again. And then um, I ended up just, you know how God does things, how things happen. They needed a half hour program as filler. And I had just gotten back from Israel and I had a passion for archeology. span Okay. The man that was hosting the program also had a passion for archeology span and he was bringing in the guy from Biblical Archeology span Review. Wow. So he said, how about we fill in that half hour, you and I just doing something. So I assembled some notes real quick and we did a half hour archeology span program and it went really well. So after interviewing Herschel Shanks from Biblical Archeology span Review, um, he asked me if I'd be interested in doing a regular program on wow. biblical archaeology. And I said I'd love to. And so we did, um, I think he and I did two or three seasons together, and then I did one or two seasons on my own. Now, are those uh, still being in the archive for people to, since the... Yes, they're still available. They, since they're transitioning to digital and all that, uh, yep. as far as online, so that people can go search it and see them? Uh, they're on YouTube, okay. but you can also go to um, God's Learning Channel their website slash RSM, Rock Shovel Manuscripts. Nice. So go to glc.us.com, I think it is. Okay. Um, and then slash RSM, Rock Shovel's Manuscripts, and all 40 some odd episodes, 50 episodes are there. Wow. Wow. So 40, 50 episodes, was that like a year or several years? or how Four did that seasons, if I remember right. Okay. So you, uh, you put a lot of time and a yes. lot of study. And yes. Wow, how cool is that? It was fabulous. I really liked it. But towards the end, I mean, they wanted me to do more. But towards the end, uh, I was getting tired. I was running out of content. And I didn't want to squeeze content that I didn't find fascinating and attention grabbing just to do another season. Yeah. And it was getting harder and harder and harder to me, for me to find that exciting and useful content. Yeah. So I just said, you know what, I, I think I'm done. I said, anytime, Steve. And I've been asked multiple times to come back and do it again. And I won't say that it's not possible, but yeah. right now, not. Just not the focus. So in the midst of all of this, you mentioned that you have uh, a fairly large family, too. Um, For children. Uh, yeah. How did that look? Obviously, uh, did, did you start having children before doing church work, or did that happen after? And how, how did that run, you know, because... Uh, church work can be very unique and can be very demanding and raising a family can be challenging too. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying my wife and I sat down and said, Hey, this is going to be hard. Let's just do it. It was just like, this is what people do. We have children. She, yeah, yeah. she wanted children and I wanted to give her children. I didn't want children. Okay. But then I had children and I was so thankful wow. that I married somebody that wanted children. I didn't know the love and joy having children wow. could, could bring to you, you know, and what it was like to be a father. And uh, it, it was it's tough. It's really hard. It's not for the faint of heart, but you step into a new world of love yeah. with, with children. It's pretty cool. And so uh, all four are grown, yeah. doing their lives, yep. running their things. Uh, you got grandkids? No. No? Waiting okay. on them. So we're right at that yeah. cusp coming A couple soon. of them are married, so <laughs> that could happen. Okay. Are you prepared to be a grandpa? Oh, I'm so ready. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm a little uh, disappointed that they all live in other states. So being a grandpa is going to be different than I'd want it to be. Yeah. You know, Sunday dinners all together in one okay. house is what I'd want. But I guess it gives you an excuse to travel, though. Yeah, huh? exactly. Yeah. Well, very much fun. Um, so, so you did uh, church work. It opened up into even a much more global audience by chance or providence, however you want to look at it. Um, and uh, and then in the midst of all that, you said you all of a sudden started going. Uh, I like to act. Was that was that something that you did as a child or later, or how did that come about? Yeah, I had a passion for acting. Um, I was in the drama club in high school. Actually, right. was the president of the drama club, and. I was also stepping into community theater and professional theater um, after high school. Uh -huh. But 
life derailed me and I went a different way for many, many years. And then after all these years of ministry, I was looking for a hobby. I was looking for a distraction. Okay. And like I told you, I took up scuba diving. I had previously taken up martial arts. I stopped with the martial arts. That's for the younger people. Okay. <laughs> How, how long did you do that? Several years. I okay. became a second degree black belt. Wow. And okay. I even opened my own dojo for a while. Another wow. business connection there. Uh, but then I gave that up. And one of my first attempted hobbies was scuba diving. Okay. Which I love the ocean. And I really like diving and snorkeling. But I knew it would be a challenge living in Tucson, Arizona. You know, yeah, nowhere right, near right the there ocean. Right there by the ocean. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but I travel. Okay. So I thought, okay, I'll do this when I travel. And I have, and I do. Wow. But not enough to, you know, make it a, a passionate hobby that I could like do every week kind of yeah. thing. So just kind of on a lark, I saw a, a meetup on the website for an on-screen acting class on a day that I was free. And I thought, you know, I used to like acting. I wonder if I still do. I wonder if I still can. Yeah. I, I was pretty good at it. Okay. Yeah. Am I still? And I've never done it on television. It's a different kind of acting. Now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna to go to the class. So I drove up to Phoenix from Tucson, it's about a two hour drive. And I took the class and I loved it, hmm. loved it. And the people who were in the class, they, they were enraptured. And they said, are you a professional? I was like, no, I've, I've never done this before. I used to do theater. And the guy who led the class, he said, you, you could do this. Wow. He said, um, you, you could. I said, yeah, I just don't have the time. I've got four kids. I got two congregations. He said, well, it's not like the theater. We have to go to rehearsals every day after work and it takes weeks and weeks and weeks and months. He said, you can make a, a short film or a film on a weekend. And my mind just went, Poof. that I can do. Yeah. So I went and researched what it meant to be a screen actor. I started reading articles and uh, watching YouTube videos and I learned that, okay, if you want to do this professionally, you need a resume, you need an agent, and you need a reel. Those are the, your three basic tools. So, well, for a reel, I can put together some of my hosting work from God's Learning Channel. Okay. Because it's a step in the right direction. And then for a resume, I can put the stuff that I used to do in high school and after high school, plus the television stuff. And... So I started, oh, and you need headshots. Yeah. So I yeah, contacted yeah. my daughter-in-law who had a brand new camera. I researched what a decent headshot should look like uh -huh. and told her, she took my headshots. I assembled the resume and I assembled the reel with some friends help. And I started looking for agents. Okay. And one of the agencies up in the Phoenix area uh, represented me. And then I just started networking all over the place, trying to find opportunities. Um, I'm that guy. I create opportunities and I look for opportunities. Okay. I just don't wait for them to come to me. And I heard that a guy named Chuck Williams, Chuck, here's your shout out to Avondale Pictures, was coming to Tucson to make a feature film. And I reached out to him and said, hey, I've got all sorts of property if you need filming locations. I've got buildings and rooms and okay. fields and I manage all of this and I'm an actor and if you need me, I'm available. So we met, uh, he offered me a role Wow. He asked me to become a producer, and we filmed Alvin Do Al Avondale Pictures' film Amazed by You, which mm -hmm. has been on all sorts of platforms. Um, it's available on, on Pure Flix. It's available on um, uh, Amazon. Okay. And then during the pandemic, we released it to just YouTube, straight up YouTube. Okay. Anybody could watch it. And we racked up, like within a couple months, a million views. Wow. Now we're somewhere around two and a half million views. And that making of that film, uh, Chuck said, hey, I would like to offer you a leading role in my next film and ask you to produce. Okay. And that was The Righteous 12, which is coming out October 9th in theaters. Oh, fun. Um, it's not gonna be in all theaters, but it will be nationwide. Okay. And I'll be promoting that and announcing that when, when I learn more. So that was my second film with Chuck. And then in the midst of doing all that stuff, I filmed another film that's on Netflix. It's called Fronteras. It's a, it's a rough film. It's not family friendly, not a faith-based film. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a shoot 'em up cop drug kind of film. Okay. And I helped with casting on that film as well. And like I said, you can see that now on Netflix and it went all over the country, did, did very well. And um, 
then I got tied to The Chosen, which is a phenomenal television series, and I've got a role in a couple of those episodes. And then I moved to Roswell, and I started looking for people, and I heard about this guy, Donovan Fulkerson, who does some film work. We connected before I moved here. Yeah, yeah. We hunted each other down. Right. Uh, I don't know if you found me first or I found you first. Uh, if memory serves, you had made some post in one of something that was going on moving to Roswell. Yeah. And uh, just said that you were acting and things like that. So I just, at the least, I usually try to just connect and say, hey, support you. Hope you're winning. Hope, you know, that was yeah. it. I just left it at that. And I think it was, what, probably four or five months later. We actually uh, probably had a chance so, yeah. to even meet or discuss again. Yeah, yeah. And um, you and one other person, maybe two other people, uh, mentioned Kate. Uh huh. And um, you guys brought me into the film she was thinking about making, Reconquest. Right. Brought me in a, as a producer on that. Right. And she offered me a nice, a nice supporting role in that. And I'm um, looking forward to that coming out as well. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Um, so, uh, kind of a neat thing for you going back to how this started that you know uh, you know most people have these stories of well I grinded and grinded and grinded and tried to and uh, it seems like I don't know if it's just your age and maturity because a lot of them say you know a lot of times they land their good roles and opportunities later in life well you're already later in right life. I don't have any more time I gotta uh, do you it know, now <laughs> you know uh, so I don't know if it's related to that or you're a firm believer in providence and, and God's things that maybe it was just that or just worked at the right timing. It's a but combination of pretty things. Neat, pretty neat. Um, I am a grinder. I'm a hustler. I work very hard and passionately for what I want. Okay. And I'm an outside the box kind of guy. If this way doesn't work, I'm going to try another way. If that doesn't work, I'm going to try another way. If that doesn't work, I'm going to try another way. Yeah. I see what I want. I go for it. So I work very hard for all these things. I did things that other people just don't do. Wow. I don't know why they don't do them. To me, it's common sense, but to them, it's not common sense. Like, uh, if I can interrupt you, for, for instance, what? Well, for instance, when I heard this guy was coming to Tucson, I reached out to him. Okay. And I said, hey, I hear you're coming to Tucson. I'm an actor. And I initiated a relationship. Yeah. And I also provided value to him for the film. I said, hey, I've got all these proper all this property I manage. I can make it available to you. Yeah. I would like, you know, I want to help. I want to get involved. I want to act in your film. Yeah. Most people won't do that. They're too timid or they're not as aggressive or they they just don't think that that could happen. I, I don't know why people don't do that. Uh, another case in point. I wanted to start ministering to orphans in Mexico. Okay. I didn't live far from Mexico. Um, so I looked for, for people who were ministering in Mexico so I could help them and partner with them. But what I heard was something like this. Well, all the orphans in Mexico are really taken care of by the state. We don't really have orphans here. Hmm. We have street people. Um, you can help them, but they're dangerous. Uh, we have a lot of poor people you can help. But in order to do that, you have to connect with the government. Okay. You can't bring supplies over Mexico without filling out lots of paperwork. And there's graft involved. and there's this and they might not get back to you. They might get back to you. And I'm like, no. Basically, I was told, here's your 20 roadblocks. And if you do these 20 things, you might be able to minister to the people in Mexico. Okay. And I was like, no, I'm just going to throw stuff in my car and bring it to the poor people. Well, you're not really supposed to do that. I don't care. Wow. You know, yeah. there are hungry, starving people and I'm not supposed to bring them food and clothes. I mean, I was ministering to people who their house at the time might have consisted of crates. Okay. These are the poorest of the poor. And I thought I'm bringing them clothes and I'm bringing them food. And I started a ministry and then I invited people to join me. Before all was said and done, we've got 20 cars and trucks caravanning into Mexico, bringing food and clothing. We partnered with a local doctor who was doing medical screenings. Okay. We ended up connecting with a seminarian who wanted to plant a church in that colonia. The mayor of the colonia asked to meet with me. Huh. Now this seminary student and this doctor, both of them said they've been trying for years to get their foot into that colonia. Here's some stupid gringo from Arizona who was invited to meet with the mayor and invited to start a church in his colonia. 
Yeah. Because I just thought it was the right thing to do and I did it and I brought value to the community. What I was doing was good for them. Why wouldn't they want us to stay there? So the Chuck story, the, the ministering to the poor in, in Mexico, I just do what I think needs to be done. It's been the story of my life. Starting the congregations was the same. I didn't have the backing of any kind of denomination or a group of people. Okay. I just felt that I needed to do it, so I did it. Yeah. You know, I, people say, well, you can't do it. Okay, watch. Or maybe I can, but I'm gonna try. And like I told you before, if this doesn't work, I'll try that. If that doesn't work, I'll try that. If that doesn't work, I'll try that. If I want it, I go for it. And I'm getting old and tired. And I'm not as aggressive or as foolish as I used to be, but I'm still doing some of that. Probably at least a little wiser in the, in the wear now though. A right? little bit, <laughs> but you know, a lot of this stuff paid off. And isn't that what entrepreneurs are? Yeah. Entrepreneurs do. Yeah. Imagine if somebody said, hey, I'm gonna start a store where I sell everything online and I'm gonna mail it to your house. Oh, you can't do that. Shipping is way too expensive. Right. It's so easy just to go to 7-Eleven. It'll never work. How many millions of people would have said that never would have worked? And now Amazon's like the biggest, com one of the biggest companies in the world. And the guy right. who runs it's the richest guy in the world. And right. I'm sure a lot of people said no. I'm sure there were a lot of people who didn't partner right. with him. Wishing they had now. Right. You know? So, yeah, I don't want to diminish God's blessing either, though. Every one of these things could have been shut down. And God is ultimately in charge of everything, but he partners with us to do the work or we partner with him. He has called us to do the things and he blesses us. He uh, makes his reign to fall upon the just and the unjust, the scripture says. Right. He's about blessing us. As long as we try to serve him, we could just assume we're doing the right thing. Now a word from this episode's sponsor. For over 80 years, Farm Bureau Financial Services agents have built relationships with you, one conversation at a time. And we're as committed as ever to providing you with that level of service. As part of your community, we're here for you, answering insurance questions and helping make sure your financial goals are on track. Call Farm Bureau agent Caleb Grant at 575-755-3237 or visit in person in Roswell at 3114 North Main Street. Farm Bureau Financial Services. It's your future. Let's protect it. Okay, so uh, we, we touched into the, the unique delicacy of God's favor and blessing and direction and our way of doing things and getting stuff done. Yeah, there's yeah. this marriage between the two, and you had mentioned that you have kind of a, a cool story that goes along. I did, and, and, and I also told you off camera you know, it'd be right to say, well, God has blessed me and I've gotten farther than a lot of people because of his blessing. That's nice, that's spiritual, but that's only half the truth. It is true, but it's not the whole truth. I grind, I work very, very hard and I do things that other people just don't do, which I mentioned a little earlier. But sometimes the ability to do these things is right in your face and people still don't do them. Wow. And I just that's don't good. understand. Yeah. I was in a Chuck Williams master acting class. Okay. And there's a couple dozen people in there, maybe 50 people, let's say. And I had an opportunity through some of my networking um, for these people to meet with a major casting director who was casting a television series. Okay. So I went to the class and I said, hey, if any of you come to me after the class or email me, I've got an opportunity for you tomorrow to meet online, face to face, a major casting director casting this television series. Out of those 50 people or however many there were, one or two people came up to me afterwards. Wow. This is a master acting class. That's why they're there. Yeah. And of those two people, I don't think either of them followed through. Wow. So why am I successful in some things? If somebody had made that announcement, I would have been first in line and I would have done whatever I needed to do to meet that casting director. I've done it. I lived in Tucson. I had an opportunity to meet a couple of casting directors. I drove to Los Angeles. Okay. 10 hour drive. Yeah, yeah. To, to meet with a ca two casting directors. And while I was there, I did a lot more networking. I, I said, hey, I'm gonna be in LA, are you available? Hey, I'm gonna be in LA, are you available? Met with a filmmaker, a producer, met with a talent uh, manager. And um, the two casting directors, one of them 
made a phone call while I was sitting there to, a, to an agent, said, hey, I want you to meet this guy. So he set me up with her. And then um, the filmmaker said he'd like to offer me a, fil uh, a role in his film. And then the manager I met the next day offered to represent me. None of that would have happened if I wasn't willing to take a 10 hour drive. Yeah. But most people won't do that. And they won't set everything in order so that can happen. And I've done it more than once, you know? So yeah. I'm hearing an underlying theme there, and then correct me if I'm wrong, that many times we're our own enemies. We are. We're in the way. There are opportunities we're just not aggressive enough, bold enough. I don't know. I don't know what the word is. Yeah. And you know what? I don't want to put anybody down because not everybody's an entrepreneur. Sure. Not everybody's a go-getter. That's my burden. It's my blessing and my burden because we don't know how to rest. You right, know, right, we're, right. We're sitting in front of the TV planning our next five moves and then next week trying to do them. Everybody's different. And I don't want anybody to be like me who's not like me. But if they want to do something, they should do it. Got it. And I'm sure uh, yourself, because of your your age and tenure on the earth, has a little bit better perspective on that going, yeah, there isn't always tomorrow. You better get on it. If yeah. I'm, hear, I'm hearing that undertone there. I, I haven't thought of it that way much. Okay. I mean, I know I don't have 20 years to build an acting career. Right. Yeah. Well, actually I do. In mean, 20 years, by God's grace, if I'm still on this planet. Right. You know, I can go much further, but um, it's just more like this is what I did want to do and I want to do it. It's like if you wanted to start a business, you wouldn't think, you know, OK, I'll, I'll think this through and I'll start it in 20 years. Yeah, yeah. No, you want to do it now. Uh, simple. You want to go to, um, to Disneyland? You don't sit down and say, OK, I'm going to go in 15 years. I'll take the next 15 years to plan it. Just what can I do to get to Disneyland? Right. It's going to cost me, you know, ten thousand dollars. How do I save it? Sure. You know, you, you figure it out. So did that come from other people, from your upbringing? Was it something you picked up by accident, by trial and error? Where, where did that come from for you? But that, that drive? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's my DNA, I suppose. Wow. So you've you just know? always had this fire to get stuff done. Yeah, to do things that I wanted to do. When I was a young man, um, I wanted to be a cop. Okay. Um, I was just out of high school and that's what I wanted to do. In California, the law says you can become a cop at 18 years of age, but most departments won't look at you till you're 21. Okay. Most. I'm like, okay, it's legal and there are some that will. I'm going to go be a cop. Hmm. So I, my brother had gone before me. There was a course of study. I could go into the police academy on my own. I didn't have to get hired by an agency. I could go in and I thought, well, if I can go in on my own, graduate, I'm certified. I can just go to any police department and say, hey, look at me. You can hire me now. You don't have to put me through the academy. You don't have to see if I'm good. I'm already good. Yeah. So I put myself through the academy, okay. graduated well, and then started looking for, for, for jobs. And I drove up and down the state to those few departments that would hire somebody my age. And I finally, after oh, it took about a year and a half, I finally found a sheriff's department that was willing to hire me and they offered me a job. As fate would have it, as God would have it, a few days later, they said, the county has a hiring freeze. We can't hire you. Wow. And long story short, just to keep all the in other stuff, I was also offered a ministry position. Hmm. So the one thing, two things I wanted to do passionately the door was shut on one, the door was open on the other. And so my passionate prayer was for God to lead me. And there was one direction to go. Kind of like moving to Roswell. Okay. We didn't have choices. This was the job that was offered to my wife. Wow. There wasn't 10 of them. It was a pandemic. Okay. She was a new graduate as a nurse practitioner. Most nurses were being laid off. Most doctors were being laid off. Hospitals were shutting down. Doctor's offices all shut down. I don't know if people are aware of this or remember. Uh, maybe they don't even know. Regular doctor appointments were, were, were being canceled. Surgeries were being canceled. So looking for a job when, you know, 80% of the workforce is being laid off, the fact that she got a job offer as a new, new grad was a gift. Wow. And it was in Roswell. And place, of all places you know? to yeah, come. Exactly. Come yeah. out here in the middle of the desert. Of and course, it, you were used to similar desert. Yeah, actually, Tucson's even... 
but a little hotter bit, and drier, a little bit prettier, a little bit bigger. <laughs> Tucson, <laughs> yeah. a lot bigger. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know about prettier because this year we had those freaky rains. Right. Yeah. So right now it's plenty pretty. So maybe you brought that with us, right. with you for us. <laughs> Um, so tell me about that change too, because that, that's a dramatic change from big city life to small, smaller, more country style home. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out. Of a city. Yeah, yeah it, it's definitely different. We did move for the summer into a, a smaller town still up in the mountains in Arizona. Okay. We were going to settle there actually, but the pandemic chased us out and we ended up here. And um, people ask me, well, what do you think of Roswell? Do you like it? I think so. You know, there's pros and cons. Right. And I've got to get used to them. There's some weather things I'm not fond of. Yeah. I don't like the dust and the wind, and there's a lot of that. Right. Because all the farms, when they're not green, they're just blowing dust. And, uh -huh. and um, I'm not overly fond of the tornado possibilities here. I know it's not bad. We're not like in the heart of Tornado Alley. Right. But just the fact that when I see some freaky looking clouds and I get a notice on my phone that it could happen, that's not fun to me. Okay. I don't like that. Uh, I like the slower pace for now. Yeah. Um, I can still pursue my film career here. So that's, that's great. That's really all I need. Um, so, so far so good. And uh, her move has been successful and yes, enjoyable. Yes, she's pleased to be here. She works for renal medicine. She's a kidney specialist. Wonderful. And uh, she finds the job a pleasure and challenging both, which is How cool is perfect that? combination. Yeah. Now for me, when we were looking during the pandemic for a job for her, I was trying to focus my resumes and praying towards areas that had major film markets. Yeah. New Mexico has one. Um, and so I was shooting for Albuquerque, but I am the one that found her the Roswell job. So. Okay. Wow. <laughs> How crazy is that? Well, um, if as firm as you are a believer in providence and, and you point back over your life of that consistent thing happening, it would be fun to see how all this all plays out for you then. I know. Life is life's a journey, isn't it? It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, and definitely. Don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So what... Um, we might tell some stories here in a minute, but I, so I don't forget... What sort of, we, we've touched on a few of those things, but you've had, you've lived a pretty colorful life. What would be some things that you would mention to our listeners that would be life learned lessons or things that are just wisdom that you live by or things that you, you follow? Obviously, you, you already shared your passion. If you want something, find a way to get it. Yeah. You know, I love that. But what are, what are some others? Invest in people over finances. Invest in family over everything. Don't pursue money. Find wow. something you enjoy doing and pursue that. Wow. If that can lead to money, great. But if it's enough to pay your bills and raise your family, that's everything you need. Interesting. That, yeah. Why do you say that? Give me, give me some more, because that, that's intriguing. As you get older, you realize what's valuable. Hmm. Yes, money's great. And I would love for you to drop $10 million on me. Who wouldn't? But the people who are pursuing that $10 million are spending 60 to 80 hours in the office. And they're not developing a relationship with their spouse, if they have wow. one. They're not developing a relationship with their children. And, you know, it's cliche. You've probably heard it 100 times. But nobody's tombstone says, I wish I spent more time at the office. Hmm. Everybody wants somebody there on their deathbed, not as a matter of obligation, but because they love them. Hmm. Yeah. Biggest joys in my life, Thanksgiving dinners with the whole family there, spending time with my children. I love acting, but I love my family more. Yeah. You know? And I was recently, in fact, just this morning, I heard from my, one of my agents, would you be interested in this role in New York? And it wasn't a big role. And I was trying to figure out if the time and the money was worth it. Okay. But then I realized I've got a daughter in Pennsylvania. Well, okay, I might be interested in that New York thing if I can tie it to a visit to my daughter in Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. So my first thought was, nah, I don't think so. 
But my second thought was, ah, I can piggyback. Now there's me again, trying to figure out how to get something done that most people won't do. You know, how can I make this happen and have both worlds? I can tie it to a trip to my daughter in Pennsylvania. Now how do I get from Pennsylvania to New York? All this stuff is going through my head. But yeah, family, family's it. Understood. And you said uh, family before money. Yeah, 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 family first. Okay. Um, your, your, your seven year old doesn't care about how much money you have. Hmm. They want you to play ball with them. Yeah. They want you to drive the truck in the dirt with them. And the time you invest in that seven year old is going to time that is investment they're going to pay back to you when they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. But if you ignore them and they learn to be parentless, they're going to spend the rest of their life parentless. Hmm. Wow. Because, you know, they're not going to care to be with you because you didn't raise them to have that care. Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily a, a byproduct of them being mean or selfish. That's just how you raise them to have a life without a parent. And I've seen people get old and none of them are all about the money. They're all about the family. They all reach out. They want to talk to people. They want to spend time with people. They want to visit with people. Wow. That's really good. We, uh, it seems in this day and age with the social media pushes and everything that everything's for success, 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 success. Uh, I'm not hearing enough of what you just said there that success looks different than what the bank account necessarily means. It's not, you're not saying to have a big bank account is a bad thing. No, I would love to have one. Yeah. And who knows, one day I might land that television role that gives me one. Sure. And I'm not going to think that's unspiritual. Right. But see, I'm working for that big role, but I'm not working for it for the bank account. I'm working for it because I love acting. And yeah. just like a person in sports wants to do better and better and better, and maybe one day get the gold medal or join a professional sport team, it's the same yeah, with, yeah. with an actor. You know? okay. I just want to do better and better, and maybe someday I'll get the gold. You know? But if I don't, I'm doing what I love. That's, that's amazing. There is something to be said about doing things that we enjoy. Yeah. And I, I recently talked to another actor friend of mine online said he was putting in 60, 80 hour weeks. And he says, I, he just can't do that anymore. It's not sustainable. He still loves acting, but not at that level. And as I get older, my levels, you know, me too. I got to rest. I got to live a little. I don't yeah. want every day to be at 99 miles an hour. Yeah. So I'm also at a phase in my life where I'm trying to learn to balance my drive and my passion with a more balanced, sustainable speed. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's something I think about on a regular basis. Even this thing I told you about when my agent reached out to me this morning, he said, go to New York. Well, if I do this, 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 I can go to New York. Is it worth my energy? Yeah. Do I want to do this? Yeah. And so I'm still thinking on it. So if I hear you right, you're not prescribing a specific formula, but more or less uh, per person, that amount might be different based on the needs of their family Absolutely. or the needs of their, their, their stuff, but uh, still up. prioritize mm -hmm. things better. Yeah, everybody's okay. at their own uh, their own level. Uh, everybody finds different things um, energizing and different things draining. So if what I find energizing, you find draining, there's no way you're gonna keep up with me. Yeah. In that, but then in the things that you find energizing and I find draining, there's no way I'm gonna keep up with you on that. For example, um, maybe on this pursue the world acting thing, that might not be your thing, but you can sit down in front of a screens and edit for hour after hour after hour. I just put a bullet in my head first. I can't imagine doing that. It yeah. would drive me nuts trying to sync up the sound with the, with the video and then looking at 30 different takes and shuffling them so that they make sense and then choosing the one you want and then changing your mind and then it not being long enough and having to redo it. And ah, I would go nuts. But that gives you joy. But yet throw you in front of the camera and you're having a ball. That's right. I can do it for hour after hour after hour after wow. hour. Other people don't understand it. But yeah. I love it. It energizes me. And yet, per what you said, you would only do it hour after hour as long as it didn't invade your other priorities. Fortunately, right now, um, kids are gone. Yeah. No grandkids. I, there, are, there are no other priorities, really. So it's easier to put family first in this phase. Yeah. And it was exactly. 20 years ago. Yeah. And I tried, you know, running the association I started, running the two congregations I started. Um, I tried very hard to prioritize my family 
the way I thought I could and should. I'm not saying I succeeded, but right. I'm saying I was aware and I tried. Um, for example, I could be at a board meeting, but if the phone rang and it was one, somebody in my family, I'm, I'm interrupting the meeting. Yeah. I'm answering the call. <laughs> it was fun. It was a joke, but it exemplifies this. I was preaching one Saturday because one of the congregations had services on Saturday. And I got a phone call and I looked at it. It was my mom. Wow. So I said, just a minute, while I'm preaching. Hi, mom. So how's it going? It's great. Uh, what are you up to? Well, I'm giving a sermon right now. Right now? Yeah, everybody say hi to my mom. Hi, mom. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> why not? Yeah. You know, why not? Um, I try to be home when my kids were home from school. I try to be active in their hobbies. Mm -hmm. And um, so I don't know if I did a good job, Donovan, but I tried. Understood. I really appreciate that. Um, that's just really good. Yeah, good, good insight. Good reminder to all of us that uh, uh, people are more important than things. And, and let me throw this out there. Since we started the whole podcast with my, my spiritual journey and my faith, yeah. um, that's God's way. God doesn't want us pursuing money. He doesn't mind us having it. He doesn't mind blessing us with it, but he wants us to pursue people. Wow. If you've got a business opportunity to make a lot of money, but you have to be dishonest to do it, then don't do it. Mm -hmm. Value the people, value your integrity. If you treat people right and you do your business well, more than likely it will succeed. Wow, love that, mm -hmm. love that. Well, we are closing in to the, the latter 10 minutes or so on the show. So um, was there things when I had invited you that I had, you know, cause everybody's different on when they respond, they're like, ooh, I'd love to share this or say that, or was there things that came to your mind that we haven't touched that you'd love to just uh, point out? Well, let me re-emphasize something. I okay. mentioned some of the TV and movies that I'm doing. Uh, I would like for people to actually pursue those. Go, go watch them, go check okay. them out. And so, um, as we, I said, we usually put contact stuff later, but since it's on the table, go ahead. How, how do people engage not only with your content, but then also with you personally, if they're just like, Ooh, I'd love to contact Steve and, and just, wow. I am I very so... active on social media. Okay. Hunt me down on Instagram okay. or Facebook Okay. and follow me. And is it just under your name? Yes. Okay. I've got a couple different Facebook accounts. Um, uh, three, I think, but you'll find one of them because okay. I'm the only one with his name. And then Instagram, same, okay. just my name. And send me a message, I'll respond. I, I always do. Wonderful. Uh, and how, how do they get to go see some of your content? I know you mentioned it earlier in the program, but just as a quick reminder. Well, yeah, well, for starters, um, out of everything I've done, I think the thing that's most important to, for people to see, and it's also one of the best, is the Chosen TV series. Okay. Um, and I don't say this because I have a big part in it. Actually, I don't. I have, I have a small recurring part in it. I have bigger parts in other things. Yeah. But this is good stuff. This will touch your soul. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've seen one episode where I haven't wanted to laugh and cry throughout the episode. Yeah. The Chosen can be seen a couple different ways. It can be seen on Peacock, which is NBC's streaming platform. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's on the free side. Okay. Um, oh, also Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm in episode nine of season one of oh, Mr. Mayor. Very much fun. And that's on Peacock also. So you can go make it a Peacock week yeah. and go watch The Chosen, watch me in The Chosen, then watch me in episode nine of Mr. Mayor. Nice. Uh, with Ted Danson and Holly Hunter. It was a great, great experience. Now for those that are just diehard fans of people that they've listened to and so forth, what episodes are you in so they can look for you in The well, Chosen? In The Chosen, it's episode four and episode eight okay. of season one. Got it. There's two seasons out now. Nice. And I'm hoping to come back for other seasons. It's it's possible. We, we we'll see. So yeah, episode okay. four, episode eight. And then you said the 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 other films. There was one on Netflix and then one on Amazon. Yeah, uh, Netflix is Fronteras. That's okay. that's the adult one. Yeah. Um, I play a border patrol agent in that. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, I helped ca cast that. But yeah, go to Netflix for for Fronteras, and for um, Amazed by You, Facebook or Prime. Okay. And. Um, then this one that's coming out is going to be in theaters, mm -hmm. but I don't know yet which ones, and I don't know what platforms it'll end Not up sure on. The distribution yeah. is yet. We'll Understood. have to just wait and see. But that one's called The Righteous Twelve. 
but they could at least Google that and see some things possibly on IMDb and places yeah. like that. Yep. Follow me on IMDb. That's a great idea. Okay. Thank you for bringing it up. Um, and um, you can send me a message and I can send you links to the trailers and all these things. The Chosen, by the way, also has their own app. Okay. So if you download the app, you can cast it to your television and then you have an opportunity to uh, support future episodes if you want, because it's crowdfunded. Right, right. And okay. Then, and then uh, the, the God's Learning Channel things, if they really want to dive deep into some of your personal side of teaching over yeah. uh, decades of stuff, they can go catch all of that. Yeah, and also on YouTube, there's probably countless sermons that okay. I gave. And, um, and then at Book of Life Community Church, they still have the archives of years of my sermons on there wow. as well, I think. Okay, very much fun. Well, Steve, really appreciate you again. I always open and close that way, but I, I, it's so much fun to hear people's life stories. And I know we don't go, this isn't a deep dive, but we covered some really neat things and what a, what a neat life you've been able to, to lead. And obviously in some ways you're just getting started on a second life. And uh, that's, that's exciting. It is exciting. Yeah, it's, it's fun. fun. It's a fun journey. Hey, I, um, I've been going to uh, Grace Church on Sundays. Okay. And that, I, I mentioned that just to give a shout out to Grace here in yeah, Tucson, yeah. Grace Community Church. But also... Here in Roswell, actually. Yeah, here in Roswell. <laughs> that's but years of habit. <laughs> for people for... Um, so I can say hi to them. Yeah. If they want to meet personally, right. that's where I am almost every Sunday. Wonderful. Usually at the second services. Okay. And if you just want to say hey, I'll say hey. So you're even that touchable. Love it. For now. <laughs> for now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't have a handler just yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, thank you. And, My pleasure, John. Uh, wish you the best on all these ventures. Thanks, man. If you enjoyed today's program, subscribe to the format you were on, YouTube or podcast channel, so you get notifications of new releases. If you want to connect with me, go to donovanfulkerson.com for my companies and related business and product offerings. On social media, my personal accounts have daily spiritual and personal life posts. My business accounts relate to those specific products and offerings. If you'd like to be a sponsor, reach out too. We can make that happen. Thank you for connecting. Please share this video and get the word out. We'll see you next time.